Butter lamps. Butter lamps are exactly the same as I talk about water offerings. Butter lamps in Tibet are very expensive, the butter. It's not easy to get butter. Ordinary people and ordinary monks cannot get any butter at all. It's very, very expensive. In fact, in Tibet, sometimes when there's a patron, they come to like Gandhin Monastery in Tibet, and the patrons order butter, and they make big tea, and they offer butter to all the monks. The monks, most of them, will not drink the butter. They'll collect it off the top and keep it in that little cloth and drain it and keep it there and become solid because it's cold there. And they drink the tea, and they collect all that butter. Why? Because these monks don't have any money, and they use that and put it in a butter lamp and they offer it to the Buddhas for the understanding of Buddha's teachings. Instead of gulping it down and eating it and drinking it, they can sacrifice that to gain attainments because they can't afford butter. For us now, we buy candles, we offer no big deal, uh, finish, no finish, we throw out. No. In Tibet, it was very difficult to get that. They don't have candles at that time, only butter. And they make butter lamps. They take a wick, very clean butter, uh, I'm sorry, uh, clean uh, cotton, very clean. Can have a stick inside or no stick inside. Very. If the stick is very thick, then it'll have a lot of smoke. If the stick is very thin, then less smoke. If you, don't, if you know how to twirl it correctly, there's no smoke at all. It's pure cotton, stiff. So you pour the butter inside. That is very precious. And there's a special prayer that is written by Lama Adisha. Because when you offer butter lamps, it is a direct opponent for the darkness that we experience, which is ignorance. When we offer butter lamps to the Buddhas, in this case in Malaysia, candles or lights, it collects the direct merit of gaining wisdom. Not ordinary wisdom just to be smart in the worldly work, worldly adventures, but to have incredible intelligence and wisdom. A sign of people who make a lot of butter lamp offerings, they're very sharp, they're very quick, they're very smart. They're, they're, um, their intelligence surpass normal people, surpass. They create that. Why? A butter lamp is symbolic of dispelling darkness. So when we put a butter lamp in front of Buddha, it's not that he doesn't have a torchlight. He can't see. Or, you know, you know, he lives in India and then there's no electricity generator doesn't work. No. We put in front of the Buddha, why? The light that it provides as an offering to Lord Buddha. We make a prayer that our mind will gain wisdom. So when we offer butter lamps, hundreds and hundreds, it is an incredible practice to gain wisdom. So when you offer butter lamps, you know what happens? When you study the Dharma, you understand it quicker and faster. After, actually, with butter lamps, you can, you can make any kind of motivation and wishes come true. Any type. Health, you know, wealth, whatever you can. But it itself, by itself, creates wisdom in your mind. Intelligence, brightness, quickness. And that intelligence is not to trick your friend or trick your business partner or steal something from them. That intelligence is used on how to benefit people how to be of tremendous help to other people. And you'll use intelligence in so many ways that you can develop so many methods. For one simple thing, you can think of this method, that method, this way, this way, this way, very fast and very quick to bring benefit to others. So butter lamp offerings are incredible for developing wisdom, to developing intelligence, to developing the ability to penetrate through samsara's tricks, understand the Dharma that is its opponent and to gain its results. And so the butter lamps can be of the three types of materials that we talked about earlier also. The best is, of course, silver and gold butter lamps. As many, don't be cheap. Don't be cheapskate. Offer. We have great cars, great watches, great clothes, great, great lingerie. La Senza's doing a lot of business. Great jewelry, great food. But our butter lamps, we offer a cheap little tiny candle from Ikea, Tea Light. Please give me enlightenment. Sounds a little contradictory. We should get beautiful butter lamps. You don't have to fill it with butter, because in Malaysia, fill it with butter, it's going to smell, it's hot. And here, butter is anywhere, like 7-Eleven buy butter, you don't have to save it from your tea. So you offer beautiful butter lamps. I'm oh, sorry, candles. Put water inside so it's safe, so you don't burn up your whole altar. And then you put candles, and you, and you offer it. When you go off, put it off. Don't say, well, Buddha's to protect. If Buddha protect, you don't have accident, you don't die, nothing happens. Of course, Buddha protect, you don't have the karma to receive the protection yet. Don't be ridiculous. And put it beautifully, and offer. Butter lamps. And the butter lamps, good quality silver made beautifully, made very well. And clean it. When you, when you do silverware cleaning for Dharma, oh, it's incredible. If you have the opportunity to clean Dharma ware, you know, silver bowls and silver butter lamps, it's an honor. Why? it'll be used to offer to the Buddhas. You should grab at the opportunity and run there to clean it. You know, slap your friend and grab the silver cleaner and the wipe and say, beat it, 
I want to be enlightened. Doesn't that great? Not, oh, well, um, my dog's trainer's mother's sister's brother died, so I can't make it today to clean. Ridiculous. Cover for laziness. So what happens is your whole offering is an art to increase your attainment. It is an art of creating awareness and the placement and the cleanliness and your awareness and pouring. Even the amount of water you pour into each one and the spacing you put in between and the correctness and the straightness reflects all your awareness. You look at how people make offerings on their altar, you pretty much know their mind. Sloppy, some is more, some is less, drip here and there, dirty, messy, not clean, unmaintained, you know their mind already. Very clearly. Very, very clearly. People who have dirty, nasty, horrible, dusty altars, their mind is pretty much similar. Pretty much similar. So if your altar is nasty and dirty and smelly and, and you know, there's, there's no Buddhas there, there's Buddha cockroaches appearing, and the offerings are not being eaten by Buddhas, being eaten by Buddha cockroaches, something's wrong. And if you say you don't have time for an altar, please, people can look at you, well, well you know, they'll look at you and what you do and they'll figure out you must put time into something to get that. No, horrible, nasty altars are a reflection of one's mind. Altars should be very clean, you should be very particular, and you should be very excited to make offerings. Excited. In fact, in the monasteries, the monks jump at opportunities to go and make offerings in front of the altars. Why? A lot of monks are very poor. They can't even afford brass. When I first entered Ganden, I had plastic cups, aluminum cups, and I used it for years. I cleaned it well for years. And aluminum is horrible because the water in India is hard, so it sticks and it's a lot of white residue you've got to scrape with forks. So it would send me hours cleaning those little aluminum bowls. And it took me five, six years of making offerings where I can buy my first silver one, but I offered it to my guru. And now I use nothing but silver. And I don't have to clean it. I'm not showing off. It does increase. It does get better. And if people offer you money, death money, prayer money, you should put it towards silver items like that to offer on the altar for them. And if people make offerings to you, to make offerings for them is an honor. You collect merit for them, yourself, and double because you're doing for them also. And to offer silver butter lamps and silver items, you know, um, sirkin, uh, black tea, um, uh, water bowls, all that, to a temple, to a center, a mandala, it's even greater. Don't wait to be recognized. Don't wait for them to put your little sign there and your name and your smiling face. I offer that. No, don't wait for that. To offer those items in the center and to be used perpetually, incredible. Incredible. That's why we make many offerings to Gandhin Sarah Drepung. Why? They will exist on and on. So the offerings we made two, three, four hundred years ago in our previous incarnation, Gandhin, it's still there now. Hypothetically, it's still there. How, how wonderful. So when we, when we make silver butter lamp offerings, it creates wisdom, opens the mind, it makes the mind pliable, and it makes you understand phenomenon more easier. I'm not trying to use big words here. Phenomenon means the way really things exist.